I want to apologize that it's not completely number theory, but it uses strongly methods from number theory. And uh, it's a work which I uh, did uh, with Johan de Jong uh, recently in November. And uh, it uh, led us to find, so maybe I start with this. I, I just write, uh, um, it's going to give a new obstruction. for a finitely presented group. So this means an abstract finitely presented group to be the pi one, the topological pi one of a smooth projective variety defined over C. That means the underlying topological manifold of the C points of a smooth uh, quasi-projective variety defined over C. So let me write X of C based at some point here where X here is a smooth quasi-projective variety defined over C. So I, I, I have written this at the very beginning because um, it is a surprising output of what we had been doing. And um, you are not really, uh, most of you doing uh, really geometry, but uh, we have already uh, obstructions for finitely presented group to be uh, the topological fundamental group of a complex uh, manifold when this one is projective because there is some abelian, some uh, hot theory in the background, which gives some obstruction. But here, it's uh, just an abstract quasi-projective variety. And the quasi-projective variety, when you look at its fundamental groups, and it has the contribution of uh, the loops around the divisor at infinity. So here, it is very strange and also uh, pleasant to see that we don't have to specify what are those loops here to find the obstructions? That means whatever set of uh, finite set you find in this group, which you suppose to be the loops coming from infinity, then it's going to be an obstruction. And uh, let me explain, and uh, just to, to make it a little bit uh, like a provocation here. And uh, this obstruction here is coming from two uh, heavy ingredients, one is a consequence of the uh, Langlands program. And which Langlands program here? That the um, conjecture which had been formulated by the linear in uh, VEL2 on the existence of companions. Existence of LAD companions. And uh, so said that the companions are on X smooth quasi projective. So, as the assumption we had over the field of complex numbers here, smooth quasi projective, but over a finite field, FQ. And uh, L is a prime which is different from the characteristic of Q. Q is the power of P. And uh, so the LAD companions had been predicted by uh, Deling, as I just said, and um, were on a curve, so for X of dimension one, this is a consequence of the um, Langlands program as proved by uh, Laforgue, Laurent Laforgue. And um, even though there is no notion of Langlands program in higher dimension, um, then Drinfeld was able to prove it in, in any dimension. And then, of course, there is no Langlands program behind. So the way to go from dimension one to higher dimension is, in fact, a fascinating uh, proof. So, um, so that's. Uh, one part uh, which is behind here. And the second part which is behind uh, the CRM which I'm going to present here is a so-called De Jong conjecture. And uh, De Jong's conjecture, uh, right now I don't mention precisely what 
what is the content of those conjectures and the content of the analytic companions is going to appear in the course of the lecture here. But De Jong's conjecture um, is technical to formulate, but it has the consequence, that it, which was already seen by uh, De Jong, uh, even though it was at the level of a conjecture, he could already see that his conjecture, if true, would imply the existence of arithmetic eladic shifts on certain X smooth quasi projective again define over finite field. And uh, when I say uh, arithmetic eladic local systems, that means I consider eladic local system on X over FQ bar, so IE. So you have an eladic local system here, let's say L, which is on X over FQ bar. And to say that it is arithmetic, it is said that it is uh, equivalent to saying that this eladic local system, in fact, comes from an eladic local system on X over FQ, and maybe not FQ itself, but uh, some finite extension of FQ. So let, let me write here FQS for some um, finite power S. So L is defined here. Okay, so that's uh, the mathematics which are behind. I mean, the heavy, uh, heavy weights uh, which are behind, and uh, why is that arithmetic? So obviously here we are doing arithmetic. When I say arithmetic, I mean arithmetic geometry, but the way his conjecture has been proven by uh, Getzgori, so maybe I'm right in blue here, for L at least three, and here maybe I should put Dreamfeld here in blue again, and maybe Lafog in blue. Um, for L at least three. And uh, again, this is a length length program, but that's a geometric length length program. So the proof relies on the geometric length length program. And as of today, there is no other proof. I mean, in either case here, that means the existence of eladic companions, which uh, it's uh, purely eladic problem, uh, which you can formulate without automorphic side, but yet the answer is given via the automorphic side, so via the length length program, and then some very, very clever uh, arithmetic geometry of uh, Dreamfeld, so highly, highly clever, to go from dimension one, that means from function fields, to higher dimensional, higher dimensional varieties uh, over a finite field, if they are smooth, and that's the reason why we assume smooth. Here I can make the remark that uh, the Link's conjecture initially was for normal varieties, but on normal varieties, there is no progress so far. And, uh, and then uh, De Young's conjecture here, yet again, it's a conjecture which is purely eladic, and, uh, but uh, the only proof we have of it uh, as of today is the proof of uh, Denis Getzkori using the geometric uh, line lines program. So once I have said uh, it's a sort of an advertisement like this, so now let me formulate an easy, uh, 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 simplified uh, formulation of the main result. So let me write in black here, and let me write here, simplify the theorem. And then uh, I will not make it much more, uh, I will not increase the level of uh, difficulty of the theorem. The theorem is more general than this, but I will uh, formulate the same theorem under another angle where one can at least suspect how to use the material which are already presented. So what is a simplified uh, theorem here? So we do complex geometry, so I apologize. So where we leave the territory of arithmetic geometry, and uh, as we started the discussion before, we start with X quasi-projective, a quasi-projective variety, which is smooth, defined over C. 
So that's the assumption. And uh, maybe there's one thing I haven't said to start with when I was talking on obstruction is that uh, there is one invariant of such a variety that's its topological fundamental group of the underlying complex manifold, uh, which consists of the complex point, which is based at some uh, complex points here. So now this best point here is basically for decoration because uh, as we know from the 19th century by the work of uh, Riemann first and then Poincaré, then uh, as we change the best point here, then we obtain isomorphic um, uh, fundamental groups. They are isomorphic via an outer uh, isomorphism. So uh, when we talk on uh, some uh, feature like uh, this group is finitely presented, I will abbreviate by finitely presented. The reason is because uh, this uh, uh, topological manifold here has, I mean, it's connected, I should say, everything is connected here, I apologize, has uh, the homotopy type of a uh, finite CW complex. And for this reason, the fundamental group is finitely presented. So um, we know basically nothing on this group. There are very, very little knowledge we have. Uh, we, we know it's finitely presented. And uh, if X was projective in addition, not only quasi projective, but really projective, we would have a few obstructions for a finitely presented group to be the fundamental group of a complex uh, projective variety, which are coming from Abelian theory and uh, from a hot theory and even a little bit of non um, Abelian hot theory a la Carlos Simpson. But in general, uh, we don't know. So that's the assumption. And uh, why, because we don't know, um, the, uh, in fact, since basically the 19th century, um, we were uh, interested not in this group itself, but uh, in its complex linear representation. So uh, complex linear representation, that's, uh, so I just write pi one here, if you like pi one top to GLR of C for some R and then for all R, one, two, three and so forth. And because uh, as we already talked on, uh, on, the, um, on the base point here, uh, if you change the base point, uh, if you fix one representation it's going to be changed uh, by an automorphism, by an, uh, by an outer conjugation. So you look at this uh, up, I'm sorry, up to uh, conjugation by GLR of C. So when you look at a representation of the fundamental group up to conjugacy uh, in the target group, then another formulation is that it is a local system. That's exactly the same datum. So it's a, a complex linear representation of the fundamental group up to conjugacy. And uh, then because this group is finitely presented, then there is a moduli space for such group. In fact, uh, finitely generated would be enough because we have finitely many generators. And then uh, you look at the parameter space of all representations. So you, you look for each generator, which you choose, it's a choice. You look at one matrix here in GLRC, and then you have relations. So that defines an affine variety. It's a modular space usually, which is called either the character variety of pi one or the modular space, the Betty modular space of X here. I should say X over C if you like. And then in rank R, and then if you fix a point here, so this is a friend representation because you have you are in GLR, you are not in GLR without a base. And so that means you are not on any torsor under GLR, but you are on, under GLR of a base and you have cho chosen a point here. So you, this is called the friend modular space. And then you have a, an action as we discuss 
by a conjugation of a GLR, and this yields a GIT quotient here. And the, the quotient here is a modular space here. So uh, a complex point here is a representation of the pi one, and a complex point here uh, is a local system. That means a representation modulo conjugacy. Okay, and we are going to be interested in irreducible L. So now I'm already in the position to formulate uh, the theorem. So let me write this. So it looks like it's not a theorem, but uh, let me uh, try to formulate it. So here's a formulation. So theorem. So we have X and R as before, and assume there is an irreducible L, a Frank R. Uh, I forgot to say that its R is called the rank of the local system. Okay, so it's a very weak, uh, it's a very weak assumption. Then the conclusion is going to be the following: the conclusion is going to be for all prime number L, there is an irreducible. QL bar representation or local system. So what does that mean QL bar local system? I didn't introduce the terminology, it means IE, let me write, IE, there is a rho which goes from the topological fundamental group, so based somewhere, into GLR of QL bar. So that means an irreduce and it is irreducible. Okay. And uh, but then which is defined over the L bar. So here you sense that some arithmetic is coming in. So you have an ir of course. If I was just saying irreducible QL bar local system, then you could immediately object, but it's not a theorem because we know by logic, which is not my area, there is an abstract field isomorphism between C and QL bar. So once you have an irreducible GLRC representation and then local system, then you have an irreducible GLR QL bar local system, because you just post compose with uh, as the abstract field isomorphism between C and QL bar. So this would be zero theorem. But here the theorem comes and it would be reducible because it's a field as a morphism. So if the complex representation was irreducible, the uh, post composed representation would be reducible as well. But uh, here the theorem says that there is a QL bar representation of the topological fundamental group. And then you look at it modulo conjugacy. But then modulo conjugacy it is defined over the L bar. That means, let me write it explicitly because not, uh, many of you don't do arithmetic geometry. This means that up to conjugacy and then in G L bar of Q L bar, then this representation here goes from the topological fundamental group into G L R of Z L bar. That means it's integral. Is that okay? I think the formulation is clear, I hope. If there is an objection now or a question, please tell me because now I'm going to give you a completely different formulation of the same thing. I will give you two different formulations. So, so uh, Elaine, Elaine, oh. it's Peter, hi. Hello, uh, Peter. Yeah, just so, uh, nice as you say, you. the audience, yeah, good to see you. Uh, it's probably not that familiar with many of these things. So. Um, just to be clear here, yeah, this is a uh, not true for uh, arbitrary finite pre and presented say group. In other uh, words, so the, the quasi-projective feature is being used to achieve this. Correct? 
yeah so uh what uh, i want to say let me first say thank you for for the question peter so uh let me just say that uh, for example let us for example let us take the simplest possible example let us take x is gm that means the complex point of x are going to be uh, the units in c okay and then let us take a rank one representation so you take a rank one representation. So the topological fundamental group here, we know it. This is Z. Uh, you, you fix a best point here. And now you look at a rank one local system. So you have a Z mapping to GL1 of C. Let us take rank one. So this is C star. And then you have a free choice. So that means any representation. So it's rank one, so it's irreducible. So that means you look at uh, your base, base vector here, Z spanned by a loop gamma, it goes to whatever you want. So for example, it goes to one over L. You fix an L and it goes to one over L, okay? So uh, this one clearly that is not integral. There is no way you can conjugate in C star because it's abelian now, it's rank one, to make it integral. So the theorem is telling you that once you have an irreducible one, then you have one which is integral by L for any N, but it's not the one you had at the, at the origin. And uh, But here you can see on this example, you don't do anything. I mean, you... Uh, you send gamma to, uh, for example, L, it's integral. But in general, of course, and uh, this, um, this is uh, also uh, to, to answer the, the remark by, uh, by Peter, then it's very specific to quasi-projective varieties. If you had taken a more complicated fundamental group, it would not be the case. And I will come to this because this was the introduction of the lecture. I was telling you that it gives an obstruction. This CRM gives an obstruction. So now, is that okay? Can I go on? No. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank so you. So now, now let me write a second formulation, which is still very mild and which glues on the formulation before. So, you know, once you have, let us take the result, which I said before, once you have an irreducible complex uh, local system in a given rank, then you will find for any L, you will find a QL bar irreducible local system in this rank, which is integral. So now let us, um, let us remember, so let us write the, the result here. I mean, let us write this uh, GLR QL bar representation. So you have one defined modulo conjugation, but but it uh, modulo conjugation it has values here. So let us write it. But now, this group is an abstract group. Uh, I'm sorry, you don't see. So the topological fundamental group is abstract, and uh, this group GLR of the L bar it's a profinite group. Is that okay? It inherits the topology of the L bar. In fact, already QL bar. It was already inheriting the topology of QL bar. So GLR of QL bar, GLR of the L bar. But uh, it's a profinite uh, group here. So uh, this map here, which starts from an abstract group to profinite group, by the very definition, it factors through the profinite completion of this abstract group. I hope you all agree with that. So it factors here, uh, no, sorry. It factors here. And here, this is a topological fundamental group. So it's the same uh, thing here. And then the profinite completion. Do you agree? But now by the Riemann existence theorem, this profinite completion of the topological fundamental group of a complex manifold, this is the etal fundamental group of the underlying now scheme of variety defined over C based at the geometry point XC. That is the Riemann existence theorem. 
which has been exploited by Grothendieck to define the etal fundamental group as a unification of the theory of the Galois theory, which predates of uh, uh, Grothendieck and predates Riemann Poincare, and the theory of Riemann Poincare. So that means uh, here we obtain by the very definition a continuous representation. And uh, so that means the second formulation is uh, if, uh, so now I write the second formulation, if there exists an L over C as before, which is irreducible complex local system, then for any L prime number, there is an irreducible, and an irreducible what? It's an irreducible representation of the etal fundamental group. Uh, this means there is an irreducible l adic local system. Okay, that's the second formulation. So if there is an irreducible complex local system in a given ring, then for any L, there is an irreducible eladic local system. Then it starts to be uh, mysterious, starts to be arithmetic, and arithmetic in two senses. One sense is that you are looking at eladic local system, and another sense is going to come now, and uh, which is closer maybe to the heart of uh, Peter, <laughs> is that you can express what, <laughs> what I said here, on the moduli, so third formulation. And now it involves the petty moduli space, <laughs> which I defined before. So now the petty moduli space, which is also called the character variety of the fundamental group, because it it's, uh, depends only on the topological fundamental group of the underlying complex manifold, as I was explaining before, then uh, this uh, modular space here is defined, it's a fact over spec Z. So uh, it's not a fine modular space. And uh, what we are interested in here, we are looking at the complex points so of course on uh, complex points and more generally on points defined over an algebraically closed field, then it is a fine. It's a coarse modular space, so it's fine on uh, field value points when the fields are algebraically closed. In fact, more generally when the fields are C1. And uh, we are looking not at this whole modular space, but we are looking at the open, which consists of irreducible points. So we write irreducible here. So now uh, we know what irreducible means when we have a representation with values in GLR of a field, of an algebraically closed field. So that means geometrically irreducible. But uh, we don't know what it means when we have a representation here, uh, when we have a representation of pi one top in GLR of some ring, let's say ring. And uh, then the right notion, in fact, which had been defined by Greenfeld before, was to say you post compose this representation by any field value point of K. So it's a field uh, of A. So it's a field value point. And to say that it is irreducible, it means that it is irreducible after post composing with any field value point of your A. Elaine, I think we have a question in the chat. Yes. Andrew Betts, maybe you want to unmute and ask away directly. Hi. Um, oh, it was just a very kind of small, uh, small question, but you inserted this uh, that GLR of ZL bar is uh, profinite. And I just, like, is it, I, I just wanted to ask but, like, why that was true, because I thought. Ah, okay. So okay. okay. So let me, um, I was fast here and thank you for the question. Okay. So I come back here. I hope you can see. 
So you have this represent, so maybe I change the colors here. You have these representations here. And because this group is in, is finitely presented, but in, in particular, it's finitely generated, it is lending in GLR of some finite extension of ZL. Do uh, you agree okay. with that? Let me say, yeah. oh, is that okay? Yeah. Because this one is finitely uh, generated is enough here. And mm -hmm. once, so that means now you can look at all the quotient GLR of O mod M uh, R, uh, R is bad, MS here, where M is a maximal ideal of O. Right, yeah. Is that okay? Does it? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, okay, I've, so, so thank, thank you for the question. I should have said that, and it's good you tell me because uh, it explains really the factorization. And mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I proceed. Is that okay? Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, so we are here, here. So you, you have in this uh, modular space, you have the irreducible modular space, uh, space uh, with uh, properties that the points are uh, irreducible representation in this sense, which I said here. And uh, now you have inside, uh, this leaves uh, inside of MBXR without any reducibility uh, property. And uh, what uh, you can consider here is the uh, closure here. Uh, no, not the closure. Um, or maybe, maybe I uh, don't do that here, I apologize. Uh, you can consider what did I want to say? Uh, uh, so I, I consider the points here. I mean, I, what I, I was, yeah, in fact, I, I gave you the, the definition here. So, uh, so those are for the reducible ones. And now, ah, I apologize. So you look here at this piece of the moduli here, which has the properties at the characteristic zero points are irreducible. And now the characteristic P points are anything. And when I say P, it's not good. I should say L to tie up with the notation we had before. So uh, we look at this moduli here. And this map here, uh, this, is, uh, this is a finite type over Z. And now I am in the position to tell you the third formulation, which is, of course, much closer to the heart of uh, algebraic geometers is the following is that the existence of L, which is irreducible uh, over C and a Frank R, it's equivalent to saying that the structure morphism, which is here, is dominant. Because it is telling you that you have an uh, C point here, of this upper, of this moduli. So it is telling you that it is dominant. So that's the assumption. You assume this map is dominant. And now the conclusion is that for that it is subjective. So structure morphism. is subjective. Okay, so now, rather than talking on the Langlands program here in various shapes, uh, how much time do I still have? You said it's 50 minutes. That would be that I have another 10 minutes, 10 plus epsilon. Yeah, we so, have a yeah we have a bit more time because of the beginning. Yeah, yeah so. because of the beginning. So let me show you where the obstruction is coming from. And then let me tell you in one word where what we apply where, if I manage or in the discussion. But uh, let me tell you the uh, the obstruction because of course it's a joy. So uh, now you have a group uh, which has been uh, constructed by Becker 
Emmanuel Broyard, and Varjou. I'm going to give you a group here, but not here, uh, which has, which does not have, so it's a finitely presented group. And it does not have, if I write the exact property you discuss for a finitely presented group, you fix R. And also what I haven't said here in the whole discussion, I was sloppy here. There is one thing I should say. In all this discussion, we fix, we fix a torsion determinant of the local system. That means when you take the representation, you look at the determinants. So the modular spaces are fixing this determinant at infinity. And, uh, and in addition, they fix here some conjugacy classes at infinity. At infinity means uh, you look at the fundamental group of these quasi-projective varieties, it has finitely many divisors at infinity, and then uh, the, you look at the loops at infinity and you fix the conjugacy classes of those loops in the representation, you assume they are quasi-unipotent. So uh, I'm a little bit sloppy here, but this is completely irrelevant. The exact formulation is anyways before. And uh, here, so you mimic the story, you fix an R, you have uh, gamma, and uh, you fix a uh, character of the fundamental group. So let's say uh, Xi, so it's a torsion character. And then uh, the theorem here, uh, if you work a lot, is going to show you that uh, if this group, so if gamma is pi one top of X as before, then it's going to be the case that if gamma has an irreducible uh, rank R representation with determinant, this determinant here, yes, this chi, uh, uh, xi, I said uh, xi determinant, then for any L, it has an representation rho L from gamma to G L R of Z L bar, which is, uh, which is irreducible over Q L bar, and which has determinant this, uh, this L here, determinant uh, this character here. So I should make precise what it means because here I had a, uh, torsion determinant with C value, here is with QL bar value, but uh, let us forget this for a moment. And they construct here, because there is no discussion like this, they construct a group. And then they look at the character variety for SL2. So the determinant is trivial. So there is no discussion here, so I can be fast here. And then they show that the character variety has only, it's defined over Q, uh, over Q, I apologize. And over Q bar, it has only two points, which are complex conjugate, or if you like, Galois conjugate, I should say Galois conjugate. And uh, it's not integral in the sense I said before, it's not integral by two. So it's quite magnificent because suddenly you have, uh, so the conclusion is their gamma is not a by one as we said, but also it says that the theorem and also the theorem plus a little bit more, the theorem I was trying to say in very easy terms before, this theorem is an obstruction. So sorry, they X C. Do they give an explicit uh, complex variety there? Uh, no, no, no. They find. I say if gamma was a fundamental group of an X, as before, 
I mean, the C point of an X, then it would have the property that uh, if you have this uh, representation here, any representation, then uh, you, we, you, they construct a group which, if it was the fundamental group here, then for any representation, you would find um, an eladic representation. For any, if you have an irreducible representation over C, then you would have an eladic representation. And okay. uh, could I say it another way? Uh, so this gamma they uh, constructing cannot be the fundamental cannot group. Be, cannot be given the theorem we had before. And as again, yeah. because I was trying to be very uh, didactic, also explaining uh, mathematics from the 19th century, I didn't enter so precisely into the um, assumption we had. We had this quasi unipotent monodromy at infinity. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Uh, so they, I they arranged it. Yeah. yeah, I apologize for being very weak on. Uh, on uh, demonstrating this assumption, it's it's important. And yes, that's the reason why you have to do something because uh, you consider all representation and you have to come back to the quasi-unipotent yep. monotomies at infinity in order to apply the CRM. So that means the CRM is really uh, this, out of the CRM, you make a general definition for those group, a sort of weak integrality property for finitely presented group in a given rank with a given torsion determinant. And, uh, and then this is not verified by their specific group. And consequently, the, the discussion we had in the CRM gives really an obstruction for, for a finitely presented group to be a fundamental group of a quasi-projective variety. Okay, that, thanks, perfect, perfect. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And in a very uh, same way, so now I have uh, like uh, maybe uh, five minutes or something. So let me uh, tell you uh, something about the proof. So you have this moduli here, and uh, this is where you take the Zariski closure on the finite field point, so to speak, I am very vague here, and you look at irreducible representation in characteristic zero over Z. And uh, the way it works is like this. When you, uh, this assumption, it's dominant, but you do algebraic geometry. So uh, what is true is because this is a finite type scheme over Z, now is really defined over Z, maybe with some holes, with some uh, gaps here. So image has some gaps, but you want to show it has no gaps. So you go very far, you take L very, very large. And if you take L very, very large here, it will be the case that this morphism, when you take, you look at close points in the fiber around the close points, if you look at the reduced structure here, then it's going to be smooth. I mean, in Grothendieck's terminology, it's called generic smoothness of finite type morphism over reduced scheme. So it's going to be smooth. So this point based smooth here is going to tell you that in fact, uh, I mean, if we forget the nilpotent structure here, just we look at the underlying reduced structure, it's going to tell you that the, um, that the formal completion of this uh, scheme at this close point, so this close point here as characteristic L is uh, pro smooth. And now it's an easy consequence of Rotenbeck theory that in fact this representation, whether it's smooth or not, if you make P very large and you look at X mod P, then this representation is going to come from X over FP bar. That means this local system, which is now an eladic local, because you look at L very far, it's an eladic local system, it's going to factor uh, is going to come from via a specialization morphism from a TEM local system on X over FP bar. So that's the theory of Grothendieck of specialization of the fundamental group which does that. So once you are there, what you want to say is that this is arithmetic. That means maybe not the one you start with, but when you look at this close point here, which correspond to the residual representation of your local system on X over FP bar, 
you want to say that maybe not this local system you start with, but an, another one with the same residual representation is going to be arithmetic. That means it's going to be invariant under the action of some power of the Frobenius of Fp here, or Fp or Fq, where x is defined here. And that is provided, so the arithmeticity, the arithmetic uh, lift, is a consequence of this de Jong's conjecture, which has been proven via, um, uh, via the geometric Langlands program. So now you have an arithmetic Eladic local system on X defined over Fp bar and therefore over some Fq. And now you apply an ID, uh, which I have been uh, developing uh, with Michael Groschenik. So, so uh, sorry to disturb. So to be clear, your proof does use the geometric. Langlands program. Langlands, yeah. In the, in the shape that there is an arithmetic lift of this given close point here right. and, to correspond to you, a residual representation. And P is large. And P is large. L is large, but you're going to tell us how you can also make L small, I assume. Yeah. One second. Yeah, one second. L is very large. Now, with the theory of specialization, I can go, I can take P very large. Yeah. And uh, to, to be sure that this close point here, which corresponds to a GLR FL bar representation, but topological, in fact, factors through X over FP bar. Mm -hmm. And now I apply the Young, of course, there's some work because I have to compare this topological invariant here with measures deformation space of this representation here over X over FP bar. Let us do that. So there's some quite some work here, and then apply the Young's conjecture and say, but in fact, maybe not this Eladic local system, but another one with the same residual representation over X over FP bar um, is arithmetic. Okay, but then now I have L large, and then I have take, taken P large in function of this L, and I am on this variety over. Fp bar and consequently over some Fq for Q uh, finite uh, finite power of P. Okay, now I apply this ID with Michel, uh, which enable us to prove uh, uh, Simpson's integrality conjecture. So it was yielding. Uh, uh, it no longer works here. Simpson integralities uh, uh, conjecture. We, he was predicting that. Uh, um, uh, rigid local system over C are motivic and consequently are integral, and we prove the integrality conjecture under some extra cohomological condition, which is going to play no role here. So the idea was you start with something which is uh, now arithmetic over a finite field, and now you apply in the links fantastic. <coughs> A conjecture on the existence of companion, it's going to tell you that this Eladic local system, which was arithmetic, it admits companions. For any abstract field isomorphism between QL and QL prime bar, QL bar and QL prime bar, for L, L prime, so L was a prime. L prime is another prime and which is not P. But now again, the theory of specialization is going to tell me that this L adic local system, this L prime L adic local system, and in fact, the theory of companions is going to tell me that it has the same monodromy at infinity up to semi-simplification. It will be geometrically reducible. It will have the same determinant, et cetera, et cetera. This uh, L adic L prime adic local system, which is defined now over X over FP bar. Now I can lift it again and it's going to be TEM. That's important. It's also the theorem of the line, what happens at infinity. It's going to uh, lift again because it's TEM. It's going to lift to C. It's going to lift to characteristic zero and then to C. So it lifts to C. And that gives the answer to the problem. And uh, the existence of companions, that's the arithmetic Langlands program. 
Okay, so I think I am pretty much on time with plus epsilon minutes, and I thank you for your attention. <laughs>